Well, we are back, different spot, different time. It is uh, 14 hours and 13 minutes into the day of Thursday, November 19th, 2020. And we're starting the vlog for Thursday. When the gaming gets off, and it was a very bad gaming day, more or less. Uh, and this is... The, I guess you could take everything as, as a type of a game. There are wins and there are losses. Today I had a bit of a loss, but it's not much of a setback. I've prepared for it, so the loss, even though it was disappointing, uh, is more is going to be survivable it's in terms of, of of where I'm going and what I need to do in terms of long run. It's not going to have any impact at all. Uh, it's just disappointing when that happens, and this is kind of if you're going to bring and this is in the in the game Lords Mobile where you understand that there are going to be losses. There are, you're not going to be winning all the time. And you have to be able to sort of take the losses for what they are and not under, and understand that, that you're not over yet. You're just sort of, this is a loss, and you accept it as a loss, and then you move forward. And the, the way you prepare for losses is you try to minimize the damage. But this also applies because this is the Lord's Mobile is a simulation. It's a very realistic simulation. You can bring this into uh, the LARP game, into the live action role play, where the scenario is real. Uh, typically, in a LARP scenario, uh, if it's a fantasy scenario, you're using dice to roll, to uh, dice to sort of create the sort of random randomness effect that uh, uh, to make the game more realistic. But the studying is the same. Here, in, in, in when you're playing Q, uh, you're using reality as your scenario set, and you're going to have wins and you're going to have losses. And it's not just because one person doesn't win or another person wins that you don't want winning. It may be bad, but there are ways to survive it. You need to understand this. And, and if you become defeated during the dark times, then you're not going to survive. Ooh. And that's kind of the, that's kind of the key. Survival is uh, is the key component of perseverance. You're persevering through the challenges. You're persevering through dark times. You're persevering through anxieties. I mean, it certainly does create anxieties if you're playing LARP for real, uh, because there are real dangers. You know, <laughs> it, 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 when when the when the scenarios are not fantasy, there are real dangers in LARP. <laughs> and, and you gotta, you have to accept that if you're gonna up your game, you've done the scenario, you've done, you've beat all the sort of the, the PvP, the person versus person games, then you need to step your game up and move up to LARP in the LARP based in a real scenario. Uh, that's the next level in gaming, but it's also the ultimate level in gaming because you really, there really isn't anything further than that. Uh, so it, 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 it's to say, well, how are you a gamer and doing, doing QLARP? Well, QLARP is based in reality. Uh, it, it is based on military intelligence. That's MI5, MI6 is British military intelligence. Uh, uh, GCHQ was the headquarters for James Bond, and there really, really is a spy scenario out there. There is an intelligence game going on. There is, in many ways, a Cold War going on there. And you can either play it with guns, you could, if you wanted, to, you wanted to play it with guns, you could become an assassin, you could do all these different things. You can do a Call of Duty Black Ops, because a lot of these militaries now are hiring contractors. And so you can go on there as a, contract, as a contractor and do these so-called security missions, which are really, you know, another form of warfare, but because it's within a contract, it's called a security mission. It's actually warfare, but it's a con it, it's a it, it's called a security contract. You can do it that way, or you can work through until work through uh, actually uh, trying to defuse war. And it's not by, done by assassination; it's by trying to, to uh, create a dialogue where you swish, where you, where you sort of you 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 pull people from one side to the other. Let's say the person's on the bad side. You want to pull the bad person. For the good side, through the, through a conversation, and a lot of times it goes through through through, uh, but bringing up the person's uh, self interest and showing that the self interest is better on the good side than it is on the bad side. 
Uh, but at the same time, is that the bad person will more likely than not try to co-opt you, will try to pull you over to the bad side. You know, there is that sort of the, the, the whole thing of the double agent, and then there are the triple agents, and there, there are a number of factors that, that step into reality here when you're doing you're doing Q as a LARP, uh, and you're taking it seriously as a LARP. Uh, that you're playing, and this is, nerd gaming is about studying. Is it, nerds are people who love to study. They, they they love their research, and doing a LARP like this is, is isn't a problem because they're doing the research anyways. It's just if you want to sort of step up from fantasy to reality, well, this is how you do it. Um, what you do, how you play, uh, the different contacts you have. Uh, are you able to swing opinion? Are you not able to swing opinion? Are you make? Are you able to see someone? Let's say someone's on the hard side of something. Can you switch them to a softer side? Can you sort of sway them a little bit? And it's not necessarily uh, inundating them with uh, with information. It's understanding, watching the person. It's a lot of it's observation. Understanding the person's psychology, the way they think, and then hitting them with very specific bits of information that you will think will either shift them one way or the other. It's like initially throwing pebbles into a pond and seeing what happens with ripples. And if you want to be effective, and depending on what you want to do, you'd throw different sized rocks. Let's say if you want to skip a rock, something like that, you think, oh, the rock. You want a, you want a flat stone. And flat stones skip very well. The question is, if you want to up your game, can you skip a can you skip a, skip a round stone? Can you skip a heavier stone? What force is going to uh, is it going to require to skip a heavy stone? And these are sort of as you do your research, as you and this is you apply this to human personalities, and you go back to Stanley Milgram, you go back to uh, Dr. Philip Zimbardo. To understand a lot of the stuff was already understood. There are a lot of people who are out there doing this. This is not necessarily being done in the public eye. And so that that you're not there by yourself. There are other people out there. It's not, but it's not until you get out and play the game that you realize that this is what's going on. Anyways, uh, it's time for some lunch, and uh, I will probably see you uh, probably ooh, around ten o'clock, eleven o'clock uh, uh, for some, some more gaming. Uh, when I get back, uh, I'll, I'll probably I might do a, a vlog on the scooter. If I get a, do a vlog on the scooter and it's successful. Uh, you won't get another vlog, uh, a segment to the vlog, until about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning on Friday. That's when you'll get the next one, next segment. It'll be like this. It'll be, we'll end the vlog, and then maybe an hour and a half later, we'll, 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 we'll start the vlog again. Because it's 24-7 here. That's it. Okay. Okay. All right. Oh. All right. What time is it now? Okay.
Well, we're starting off, and we're going to get a bit of a vlog. Anyways, it's going to be a nighttime vlog. Because uh, I'm going home at night. It's about uh, 10 past 9 I left. It's warm out. It's gone up to about 55 degrees uh, Celsius, uh, Fahrenheit. And we're still running in second gear. Doing about uh, 22 kilometers an hour on the side streets. I think that's good for here. And that's the thing is I want to be able to control uh, the speed on the accelerator and not necessarily have to max out the speed while I'm on the side streets. So that's what I'm doing. And things are going well. Christmas lights are already up. Because of the bumps and everything on the side streets, I want to stick to about 25 kilometers. That's the goal. What uh, slows me down that part back there, uh, the brakes are ABS, they're uh, automatic braking system, they're electronic, and sometimes they activate on the slightest touch. So that's what was the issue back there. Let's see, come to a full stop. Alright, here we go. In second gear, I got much better pickup than I did before. Let's see if I can make it to the, uh, uh, the uh, light or changes. Smell the smell of weed. Somebody's lighting up. Make the light. See what happens here. Okay, good. Made the turn. Now to open up the throttle. We're, do we're doing about 30 kilometers an hour. I think that's good. We'll see what time I get in. There's a bit of a wind here now, so... Uh, well, I'm using the, uh, I've got the clear visor that came in today and allows me to ride in the wind and it doesn't affect my eyes. So, yay for that. Camera's still going, which is good. We'll start again in about uh, eight minutes, eight seconds, I should say. Okay, the light is changing, and we can go. of delay turning green.
doing 35 right now. But I think this is maxing out at 35 kilometers an hour. During the day, it's difficult to see the uh, speedometer. Now I can see the speedometer, and it says we're doing about 35 kilometers an hour. So, of course, we're going slower on we're going slower on the uh, inclines, but I still have more room on the, on, on the throttle for more. But right now, 30k is uh, 30 kilometers an hour is good. 35 kilometers is good. So we've definitely moved up several notches. And at 30, 35 kilometers an hour, we are just about 15 kilometers under the speed limit. So not bad at all. Uh, happy with the progress. And it's not a bad night out tonight. I'm not wearing, actually not wearing the balaclava. There's no need for the balaclava. The balaclava basically protects the neck and the chest area in terms of uh, the upper chest in terms of the uh, forward and the wind. Uh, and then when it gets really cold, I haven't tried it out yet at uh, 30 and below. So that remains to be seen. And the goal is uh, all weather scooting, except when it's wet on the ground. That's the only type of weather that will halt the uh, the scooting. Now at 35 kilometers an hour. And I'm handling the speed fine. Got a bit of a wind here. That guy didn't leave me enough room. Model to slow down. <sighs> Proper driving technique is a must, particularly on a scooter and at high speeds. So our vlogs are definitely. Our vlogs on the scooter are definitely, definitely going to be shorter uh, because we're going faster. But we're still a month out in terms of our vlogging. 
that's the only issue. We're, 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 we're back to four weeks out. So it's going to take a bit of time to sort of move things along and get things back in order again. Do I make the light or not? This is a huge Toyota dealership. They moved the, they're, they're moving their uh, Lexus dealership from where it was further on Steels, uh, closer to Woodbine, and they're now uh, moving it up north here to where this is. Uh, we've got about 30 seconds left on the clock. Seven seconds. And the light changing yellow, red, and green will be in about a second or so. There we go. <laughs> engages on its own as with the tiny little cut. But it did sense the, 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 the brake engaging and so it engaged. Back at my place, here we go. 